Next weekend is the Northern Festival of Steam. It's going to be held at Beamish Open Air Museum. If anybody's local in the area, it's well worth calling in. I'll be there all day Friday and probably all day Sunday. If you do come, call across and say hello. I'll be there with Richard as usual with the big Sentinel steam wagon. This is one of the items I picked up from the car boot sale. I've been going to make one for ages and just haven't got round to it. It's simply a countersinking tool or a tool for taking a sharp edge of a drill hole. Obviously handmade, obviously old. And I would imagine this has done a lot of work. It's got a nice feel about it and the drill has been beautifully sharpened. This is the other item. It's a spanner of some description. Um, obviously old, quite worn so it's been used quite a lot. I'll get a close close up of this end, a bit like the business end. There's no writing on it that I can see. Uh, Mick actually bought this, so he beat us to it. It was only a pound, but for a pound you just you just couldn't not buy it really, could you? As you can see it's got serrations on that jaw and that jaw there is plain. If anybody knows what it's for or if anybody's used the one, be great if it can let us know. This package turned up at work last week. I'm not sure what's in it. big top wrenches that one's a greenfield made in the USA that's really nice that I put some of that sizes so I'll, I'll keep that one obviously and I'll let Nick have that one that's nice that it's done a lot of work as well it's got a bit of wear on it I bet somebody's got eight and arms with two and that. I haven't got a one that size, I've got a, a decent one and I've got a huge one. The lad that sent the tap wrenches in, a uh, lad called Tony. Tony's basically had the same sort of career as me, he's had 45 years in the motor trade and now he does something totally different. Tony asked us if I'd do him a favour, if I'd say a big hi to his wife Tina, because Tina watches my channel as well. So there you are Tina, a big high. The drone calls for a 5mm grub screw to be fit in the centre of that groove. So we need to pick up the centre of that hole. So we can drill a grub screw hole through there. Just use an edge finder on each side of that, split the difference, and that will give us a centre hole. Just when it kicks off, which is there, see on the x axis, we'll take it over to the other side. Do it again. There. That gives me a reading of 24. It could be 24 anything. It's just a reading of 24. It's actually 24 millimeters. All I've got to do now is half that, which is obviously 12. And 12 millimeters will bring me right in the center of there. Right, using the eyeball method you can see that's spot on in the centre of there. Next thing is to find the centre of the centre of the pulley slot. I'm just gonna eyeball this and that looks that looks pretty good there. Right, so I need to drill that 
4.1 mil, which is your tap and drill for five. Counter bore it and then put some threads into it. Right, that's a 4.1 mil drill. There it is, right through the centre. Right, I'm going to counter bore this for 20 mil, 20 mil deep. You see where that axis is at. Right, this now gets topped five mil. I'm going to use a nice little top wrench that I bought at last week's car boot sale, which is this one. And put a centre in the in there just so it follows it makes it go down nice and straight. This is a machine tap so you can just wind it straight in. You don't need to back off. I have the collar chuck mounted back on the lathe. I've got the bit of 14mm silver steel mounted into that. It's running within half a thou, it's running nice and accurate. A friend gave us a polarising lens to try on my camera. Unfortunately it wouldn't fit the camera, but it does fit over there. And I'm sure you can see that it actually takes the glare off the gauge, off the clock gauge. I'll take it off. This is the clock gauge I use all the time on this lathe, so what I'll do, I'll probably mount this. It's a good fit there now. I devised some method of fastening that onto the gauge, onto the clock face, so you'll be able to see the reading a lot better. Right, anyway, that's running through. Next thing to do is centre drill this, face the end, and centre drill it. running nice and true with can't bring anything else but true so now we're going to machine this side of the pulley I've got the tool touching right on the edge of the pulley 
I'm just going to use a DRO to measure the 1.5 millimeters. That's the thickness of the, the cheek of that side of the pulley. Right, that's 1.5 there. I'm just going to put a mark on it. So that's what I need the machine down to. Right, this side goes down to 30 mil. That one was 32. This is 30. Thirty point four. We want thirty. Touch in there. Point two foot. One more leg facing foot. That's bang on, thirty mil. Just going to break that edge. By break the edge, I mean just put a little chamfer on it. Just like that. Right now, we've got a machine. One more pulley in there. One more pulley groove. And the machine in the end flat, and that's it. That's it done. Use a parking tool to mark off where the pulley seal is going to be. Right, the groove needs to be 6.2 mil wide. We need our DRO to put the 6.2 there. So that's the inside and the outside with the pulley marked. That's the width of the pulley there, 6.2 mil. I'm just measuring it to be a double sure. Yeah, as I can see, that's six, 6 6.2, that's 6 mil. So we need to put the parting tool down in the centre of that. For a depth of 5 mil, and then machine the tape was on each side of it. Just trying to dig in there. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. That's better. Now we need the two side cheeks of the pulley machining. I spent 10 minutes and made a little profiling tool out of high speed steel just to cut this last pulley groove. Would have been similar if I'd made I want to do you that too as well, but I didn't, so I just have to use it to do this one. Be nice and gentle with this because it's going to be taking quite a wide cut.
Quick on both sides as you can see. That looks decent. Right, it's just about finished there, but the machine is sent flat. And there's a small counter board to go in there. Anyway, just a minute to see you once again. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as usual, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in towards me, Dad, and your wife, Debs. Thanks very much.